Hi guys, welcome back. This is Crystal with Emerson Aurora Design. And today I'm gonna to show you how I painted with a glitter using double-sided adhesive. This is such a fun tumbler to make. I'm using Cat Scratch um, double-sided adhesive and I made my own template. It is a stitch template with hibiscus flowers. I cut it on the white side of the cat scratch. I know I'm not showing it beforehand, but the blue is the backing. And I have a Cricut, so I actually cut it on the washi tape setting. And here I'm gonna show you how I'm going to glitter this. I actually chose to glitter this before I place this on the tumbler. To me, that just makes more sense and it's a little bit easier. I can see more of what I'm doing. And these are the, col the colors I just showed you in my glitter are what I'm using for this tumbler. Uh, I'm not going to list the individual glitters because they are just a hodgepodge of different glitters that I have on my glitter shelf. And you can really just use any colors that you like. Using the double-sided adhesive really works well with using fine or ultra-fine cut glitters, but you can use any glitters that you want. I find that the chunky and the chunky mix ones don't cover as much as I would like, so I choose to use the fine glitters. I know it's hard to see the design of the t um, my template right now, but I'm going to remedy that by using this really pretty blue holographic and essentially I'm doing my outline of my stitch and you'll be able to see him here in just a second. I'm just burnishing that glitter right onto that double-sided adhesive using my fingers and I want to get really good coverage so rub that in really well. I started off using this makeup brush to brush off my glitters but it was too soft so I'm going to use a chip brush. Chip brush works really well and for some reason, these cat scratch double-sided adhesives kind of have a bit of a static to them, so the glitter really sticks. So I had to uh, really brush it off with my chip brush. Um, I'm speeding this up because this is a long process, and you guys don't want to see me brushing off all this excess glitter forever. I'm using a picture I found on the internet for reference of my stitch colors. <laughs> I'm doing the best I can, but really you can use whatever glitters that um, you have on hand. I love Stitch. He's one of my favorite Disney characters. I'm not a huge Disney fan. I enjoy Disney, but I'm not a crazy Disney fan to where I'm. everything I do is Disney. But I just really love Stitch. I think he's adorable, and I wanted to do this design. I've been wanting to do one of these for a while. This is so much fun working with this double-sided cat scratch um, adhesive, whatever you want to call it. There's many, many companies that sell the double-sided adhesive now. It's called something different no matter which um, company you purchase from. I personally purchased mine from Amazon. It's at the actual cat scratch tape or double-sided adhesive. I'll leave a link to it in the description box below of the exact one that I use. I've been using this a couple I've been using this a couple times now and I really enjoy it. I feel like it is just such a fun, fun thing to do. I'm using my little weeding tool here that looks like a needle to really poke in and get that um, backing off. One note I do want to tell you. Start with your darkest colors first because when you're burnishing in, see how it's rubbing kind of on the other colors? If you use a dark color over a light color, it will stick to the light color. So use your darkest colors first so you don't have any contamination. There's my little stitch, isn't he cute? So for that darker pink mouth that I did, I just tried to keep the glitters as um, contained in the mouth as I can. I didn't want to scrub it all over the whole stitch to try to prevent getting in that lighter blue color, and it worked out pretty well. I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to lie, this is one of the messiest glittering processes you probably will ever do. Um, you will have a glitter bomb, I promise you. <laughs> 
But, you know, I work in my little studio, and I always look like a glitter bomb when I um, leave my studio. <laughs> I did my best to try to contain my glitter bombing, but what can you do? So when I'm doing this, um, it is a little bit difficult to see my lines before I peel them up, um, the cut lines basically. Some people will take some mica and rub it in on the template before they remove the uh, cut lines. I could have done that, but I could see it just enough to pull up my design. Plus I knew exactly what my design looked like beforehand. Um, I didn't want to add the extra headache of putting the mica down because honestly mica is crazy mess. <laughs> so I decided not to do that. I should have done it for just benefits of tutorial, but um, as I pull up these outlines, you'll be able to see exactly what it is that I'm doing. So the rest of the, the design here is just hibiscus flowers surrounding stitch. And I wanted to outline each hibiscus color, each hibiscus flower in a little bit of a darker glitter and then the lighter colors would be the insides if that makes sense. So I'm just doing all my outlines right now since those are my darkest colors and then you'll be able to see all the pretty little flowers that I made. guys are interested in learning how I make my templates, um, I can make a little series of videos on how I make my templates. This one's a seamless template. I am no expert, you guys. I kind of have learned this through trial and error. Um, I made this specific uh, template for a 20 ounce skinny straight from Stainless, De Stainless Depot, um, the hog tumblers that they have there. And if you're interested, I will attempt to <laughs> make a tutorial of how I made this particular template. If you're interested, let me know in the comment section below. So I'm just going to continue to pull up those outlines and glitter those. There should only be a few more. I tried to put as many flowers around him as I could because I really like these hibiscus flowers. And they're really pre prevalent, prevalent, <laughs> prevalent in the movie Lilo and Stitch because it's set in Hawaii. As you can see, that light green that I put on those flowers as an outline was really pale. But once I do the inside of the flowers and then the complete out, um, background color, they do pop better. Right At first I was like, oh man, I shouldn't have used that color. But um, it'll, it'll end up being okay in the end. I have so many glitters that I haven't used on my glitter wall um, that sometimes using doing these kind of templates are fun because then I can kind of see the different colors. I could use different glitters I haven't used before. 
Sorry it's going out of focus. My camera was being a stinker. So the way I want to do my hibiscus flowers, I do want to kind of ombre them in two different colors. So after I peel all this up, I'll show you exactly how I did that. I'm going to go in with the color and just kind of sprinkle it just around the edges, the outline edges, I guess, of the flower. And then put another color on the center. And once I burnish this down, it they will kind of ombre themselves. And it turns out really pretty. I was happy with how that uh, worked, so let's go on and do the rest of the flowers. Sorry this is upside down. The way that I have my camera situated, um, I wasn't able to flip it. Um, but hopefully you're getting a good idea of what I'm doing here. I guess it doesn't matter if the image is upside down or not. So now I'm going in the center with the pink and the outside with the purple, similar to the way I did the bigger flowers. I really never have any uh, beforehand planning. <laughs> well, I guess I shouldn't say never. Um, this time I definitely didn't. I just chose colors that I really liked and put them together um, just based on how pretty they look together. So you can choose any, any way you want to do this if you guys want to give this a try. This is just so much fun. I highly recommend doing this if you like to play in glitter. If you're not sure which colors go well together, I do suggest purchasing a color wheel or even just printing one from the internet. It does help with um, colors that really go well together to help you with that. I tried to choose the bright, kind of fun, tropical colors <clears throat> while still trying to match it to stitch. One thing to note, the color, the flowers on the far right and far left that are split, those will match up with each other because this is a seamless pattern. So you want to make sure that you're glittering them similar. Excuse me. Just like I am here. Because they match up so they will be the exact there will be one flower when they're put on the tumbler. If that makes any sense. It is seamless so they match up when it's on the tumbler. Now this is that really pale, pale mint green that I wasn't really sure if I liked, liked that color on this, but it kind of pops once I put my color it's on the inside of the flower. And you can see it a little bit better. This is a really simple pattern to get started with a um, double-sided adhesive glittering. Um, template. I do recommend it. It's very easy but it's so adorable. So it's not as intricate as some are, some different ones are, but um, it's an easy one to get started. You can even let your kids help if they're old enough to play with glitters and under your supervision so that all your glitters, expensive glitters, don't end up on, in a pile on the floor. But um, yeah. <laughs> I actually am going to have a tutorial coming up here soon of one tumbler that I, I let Miss Aurora um, design. Well, she chose a design, I should say. We chose a coloring book design of two of her favorite characters, her Disney characters, and I made a double-sided um, adhesive glittering um, video 
of her glittering it. So if you're interested in that, I'm going to have that here up in the next couple weeks and just see how fun it is to do this with your kids. Fun little Saturday, rainy day project. You can let them do the glittering and then you can put it on the tumbler when it's safe. You don't want them working with epoxy. But it is like using a coloring book. So it's kind of fun. She had a she had a lot of fun picking up the colors and glittering her her design. So I'm almost done with the flowers. Going back in with that purple again. Still have to do the little um, stamens, stamens, the center part of the flower. I guess that's what they're called. I'm not a botanist. <laughs> So for these, I just wanted to kind of use the same colors for the center of the flowers, the sa same colors that were in the flower I used. So I could have done, I should have done this when I was actually doing the, each flower, but I guess I didn't realize what I wanted to do at that time. I'm sorry about the camera going out of focus. It kind of has a mind of its own. <laughs> so now I'm going to do the complete background. I'm going to peel off everything else. The whole background of this. It was really satisfying peeling this up. Now it is paper so it will rip. It's not like peeling vinyl but um, this part was fun I thought. I'm using this really pretty um, holographic kind of opal. It's more holographic um, than opal, but it is a little bit translucent, this glitter. And I'm going over the entire image. It's going to fill in any spots I might have missed, plus the background. And since it's translucent, it allows the design to show through. And I'm just burnishing that down really well. This is a little bit more of a medium cut, but it's all one, the same cut, if that makes sense. There, it's not a mix, is what I'm trying to say. And guys, putting that holographic translucent was the best idea I've ever had. <laughs> Look how beautiful this is. It's absolutely gorgeous. So now I'm going to show you how I am going to wrap this on my tumbler. I did... Uh, sand and wash my tumbler. I did not spray paint it. And I'm just measuring it. Make sure that my flowers will line up. As you can see, that is a seamless. And it's a little fumbly. I'm a little fumbly. I, guys, like I said, I do this a lot. I'm a tumbler maker and I make tutorials but I still fumble around with <laughs> my templates so um, I'm just gonna peel back that section and place that down to have a nice anchor point making sure that it's going to match up again and wrap this just like I would a full wrap tumbler using vinyl and just smooth that down as you go and try to smooth out any bubbles. And I'm going to cut it here just to trim that excess. Be real careful if you're doing this with an X-Acto blade. Make sure you're using a sharp blade, but be careful. 
and she matched up pretty good. I think I was proud of myself for making this seamless. So be careful of your little fingers. I am holding my blade steady and just rolling my tumbler to cut the bottom excess off. You can use a um, an edge trimmer if you have one. I just did this because this is a complete straight tumbler and it rolls really smoothly on the table and I was able to get a um, nice straight cut with this. Like I said, please be careful. We don't want any cut fingers. I'm doing the same thing with the top of the design because we want a nice We want a nice edge, I forgot what I was saying there for a second, um, at the top, especially when you're using epoxy. And there he is so far. He looks so cute. I'm going to go and glitter this bottom with um, this the same glitter I used for the background. It's called Easy on the Eyes. I purchased it from the Glitter Craze. I can't promise that they still have it in stock. I ended up having to put three layers of epoxy on this tumbler, sanding in between, letting it completely cure in between. And this is such a stunning, stunning tumbler. I love it so much. I want to make a million more of these double-sided glittered, um, double-sided adhesive glittered tumblers. I hope you guys learned something new today, and I hope you enjoyed my process. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below, and please consider subscribing. Happy crafting, you guys, and have a beautiful day.